Hey guys, I'm Bella, the maker mama boss lady behind Fiber and Fox, and this is episode 52 of my podcast. Now, if you are joining me for the first time, or if you haven't been here for a while, this is not how it usually goes. I just want to put that disclaimer up front. I'm in a different location, the lighting's different, the audio's different, and we're doing unedited, uncut this week. Um, I will explain all of that shortly, but um, yeah, for the, for the polished-ish sort of polished content with editing and captions and photos and all of that, go back a few episodes. Stuff's a little bit in mayhem here right now, but um, I have a lot of content that I wanted to share, so I'm going to do my very best to give you an unedited, <laughs> we're gonna pretend we're live, but we're not really live version of the podcast. Like I said, I'm Bella, I'm a crochet designer, I also knit, and I chat with you here about all of it. And anything you need to know about me is linked below the video, including show notes, um, probably on my blog, if not in the down bar, there will be links to anything um, of interest that I mention here. So, <laughs> admin-wise, why are we doing this? Um, currently, we are redoing two rooms in our home, um, one of which is gonna be my husband's office, slash music room. He works from home um, and has a lot of instruments. These two things are not related, but he needs a lot of space for both of them. And um, the other room is going to be a small yarn craft office slash homeschool room um, for my daughter and I. So we are redoing both of them at once. The, the painting and the windows and the closets and all that stuff have been redone. It's looking really nice in there. And we're having the floors redone this week. Um, so we had to clear everything out of there redoing, uh, refinishing the hardwood floors, which I'm very excited about. But um, my husband who works from home, he just came inside if you <laughs> heard that, um, works from home and usually his desk is set up in there and I use his desk and giant mega desk wraparound monitor situation. Um, I don't have the words to describe what it is that he has, but uh, it's very techy. And I use that for editing usually. Um, and I don't think the software will run off my laptop and if it will, it'll be very glitchy. Uh, so we're going to go for the unedited version, um, hopefully only this week. It's going to be most of this week and then part of like next waiting for the floors to be thoroughly dried, cured, whatever it is you call the new floor. Um, so it's going to be a while before we're set up in the new office, but hopefully we'll get the, the computer stuff back up and running quickly. Um, so yeah, we're just going to do the best we can this week and it's allergy season, so hopefully I don't have a major sneezing fit. And this is somewhat cohesive, um, but again, this is not how things usually go. So bear with me, <laughs> but I do have a lot I wanted to share. So we're gonna just do the best we can. Um, what I'm wearing, nothing exciting. It's a shirt that says Yarn Life. Um, and it's not from a small maker or anything. So we don't need to mention that. And finished objects, I have some. That is the one I really wanna talk about, but we're gonna just get these socks out of the way. I have no socks on the needles right now, which is highly unusual. I don't know the last time that that was, but I finished the pair and the sock blockers are all in the basement um, with the uh, supplies. So I can't really show you as well as I would like to, but go back to the last episode um, or two for more details on this yarn. This is yarn that my daughter and I dyed together with um, food dye. This was one we had done a couple years ago and then this we did over Easter, um, or not over Easter, but after Easter we had leftover egg dye. Um, so yeah, we did a little self-striping experiment. I think I put the reel in the last podcast of how we did it. Um, but yeah, oh, I'm realizing now I wanted to put a reel in this and that's not going to happen without the magic of editing. We'll get to that in a minute. But <laughs> this pair of socks is finished. There's two of them. They look cuter on blockers. They're really fun, really bright. Plain vanilla sock, twisted ribbing, nothing super noteworthy, but, um, I finished them. I think that's my fifth pair of socks for the year. And yeah, I didn't cast any more on because I wanted to do summer projects and it's kind of, kind of turned on me. <laughs> so yeah, the sunflower elephant in the room. There's actually two of them because I made it once and it didn't fit, so I made it again and I'm still not sold. But this, this is a no pattern attempt at making. And this is where I was gonna put in a reel of me wearing it because it's so much more you can just truly understand the the wonder that this is. Um, but you're gonna have to go over to Instagram. I will link the reel down below for you um, of me wearing this over a dress. 
it's it's a lot <laughs> it's a real lot um but yes this is a no pattern crop top fringe tastic sort of looks like a tablecloth um out of somebody's 70s cottage core beach house i don't know um and it's out it's also currently inside out on the hanger so did i wear it inside out in the video today quite possibly quite possibly was inside out when i made the reel but <laughs> yeah i think it was i think i definitely made a reel wearing this inside out um so yeah more reason to go over check that out on instagram because i clearly know what i'm doing but i looked at a bunch of patterns um for something of this festival crop top boho whatever you want to call this um but it's a, a 12 granny square construction top kind of a one size fits all unless you change the gauge situation um which i made a smaller one first and it doesn't fit me um or all so Yes, the pattern, the granny square pattern itself, I believe is the sunflower granny square, granny square sunflower, something of the like, and I found it free on Sarah, the Sarah Maker blog. I will link that for you. Um, but I, I did modify the edging and the, the whole pack, like the, the top itself, I, I was winging it. But if you like the sunflower square, very cute. It's got some puff stitches and whatnot. Um, you can find that on her blog. So I made 12 of those. And I constructed it into what was going to be a bathing suit cover-up. And now I think I'm definitely not going to wear it as a crop because a pregnant belly, that, that's a lot. Um, but it kind of looks okay over a black dress, but also it kind of looks crazy. So we're going to talk about it. I have a lot of thoughts. I'm trying, I was going to have notes and do cuts and now I have to just go straight through. What size crochet hook did I use? I or a J for this. A pretty large one, pretty loose gauge. The yarn itself is some cotton. I'm sorry, there's going to be more reaching and looking and confusion in this than I would generally like, but we're making it work. It's all Hobby Lobby brand. The white is this Pima Supreme. Pima Suprema. And the colorway is lace, but the yarn itself is a did we? And then the yellow is mustard, fresh haven. It's also a cotton, but it's not Pima. I think it's just, actually it's Lyocell. Just kidding. It's 100% Lyocell, which I think we've determined is a bamboo derived fiber um, or a plant-based, but often bamboo derived fiber. I'm going to call away mustard and then the rusty red. I don't know if I have a tag. Let's see red clay. So I really like these. The Lyocell ones have a bit of a sheen to them and then the Pima cotton is really soft, doesn't really have a sheen, um, but it's just slightly softer than a cotton cotton, like a dishcloth cotton. And a little bit, I like it a little bit better than like the Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton one. So those paired well together. I had gotten a bunch of skeins because I was thinking of either like maybe doing a baby blanket in some of it as well or a matching thing for my daughter and then I kind of ended up with the second one here which was actually the first one this fit me like a real tight tube top and that was not a great look either but this one I made with a H or G crochet hook so it's just it was just too small I didn't do any gauge swatch and I really had no idea what measurements I wanted but comparatively like this one is just a lot this is not a good way to show you. I only have so many hands. How can I show you this? This is just proving to be a smashing success. It's just a lot smaller. Mm, that's doing nothing. It's smaller, I promise. So this, I am either going to take the squares out and work it into a baby blanket type project for someone else, um, maybe with some other colors in there, or it fits on my daughter like super loosely as like a full shirt. Um, so I think I may crochet some wedges or something in here to get rid of the, the V-neck of it and then just make some short straps and give her a similar top, um, but not cropped. But overall, 
I like how the granny square bit came out. I'm just really confused about this fringe. So again, you're gonna have to look at the reel because it, it looks all right here. You're like, this is kind of fun, kind of boho, whatever. But on, I don't, I can't tell if it's just that I'm pregnant and like over my belly, it looks really crazy or if it's just, <laughs> if it just looks like a tablecloth or a curtain. Um, either way, <laughs> it is possible I made the tassels. I keep saying fringe, I think, but they're, they're technically tassels. Tassels too thick. I do like a chunky tassel on a shawl, but these might be a little too chunky. But I have them on each of the points in the, in the kind of the hills and the valleys here. And they definitely look weird over my belly, especially this middle one. Like, cause it just whoop, whoops out. And I originally wasn't going to put them on there. And I had the top with just, you know, just the granny squares. And I thought the triangles or the, yeah, the wedges, the openings looked a little weird. I'm going to put this back up here because holding it up is a lot. Um, like the wedges were kind of strange. Just, I hadn't really seen a top like that. So I couldn't decide if I liked it. Again, didn't, wasn't sure about over my belly. So I thought about maybe it making some, I'm going to have to hold it up again, <laughs> some, half squares or like just triangles to fill in the front two wedges. I'll probably leave the side ones open because I like the almost split hem feeling of it. But I might fill these front two wedges. Of course, I made all of the tassels and thoroughly, thoroughly adhered them. Um, so I'm going to have to like surgically snip them off of there if I want them gone. Um, but so far feedback that I've gotten from the Instagram is that people are not a fan of this middle tassel. We might be a fan of the other tassels, but I also feel like it's kind of weird if there's this weird middle tassel gap, if I just took that one off. So I think if I do take them off, what I'm gonna do is snip these two first, the middle and the back middle, and then see how we feel. There's also the option of shortening the tassels because they do hang pretty short cropped over my belly in the front, but they are down onto my butt in the back, which, mixed feelings. So I'll snip these two first and then maybe the side ones and just leave the two on the, or the four, I guess, on the low points. I need, I need lots of feedback in the comments on this. So either go leave your feedback here or on the, on the reel. Cause I'm going to at least leave it through the weekend before I mess with it anymore. Um, yeah. So then I might add triangles in the front or I might just leave it People were saying it does look cute with the, the wedge out of the front over my belly, so maybe I'll add the triangles next year. I could level out the whole entire hem and do like just full fringe. I had thought about doing almost like a macrame type fringe where I do like some knots and attach the fringe to itself in like some sort of fancy braided way, but that would not look good pregnant at all. So that might be a future endeavor. I don't know, this was a very on the whim project. And I do like how the fit of it came out. I think maybe it could be a little bit more oversized, um, but I like the straps. I made I, a lot of the ones that I found patterns for were very thin, like either an I cord like, or like even just like a single chain of stitches, but I made a much thicker strap because I like a thick strap to cover a thick strap. Um, I think that's good. I think the fit of the V-neck is good. Little iffy. <laughs> on suggestibility of the placement of these two. Um, yeah, they, they don't hit questionably, but they're still slightly suggestive maybe. Um, so I don't know. This was all just not a huge investment on yarn anyway, so I'm not super devastated, but I also don't want to frog it because I've now made it essentially one and a half, one and three quarters times. And I do think it's really cute and I like the colors and even if I only wear it over a bathing suit, like I still feel like it has some cute potential. So thoughts, give me all of your thoughts on my sunflower granny square top crop top fringe tassel situation. Add more fringe, add less fringe, add more tassels, less tassels, trim the tassels, add wedges, <laughs> leave open wedges, flatten the entire hemline, add tassels off of that hem, flat hemline. A lot of options, throw it in the frog pile, make it into a baby blanket. Oh, there's a cat in here now. We're just gonna keep making this more interesting. Are you gonna be a nuisance? Possibly. 
right, I'm gonna take a sip of tea and try and not be super awkward as I lean over here and get it, but it's probably gonna be awkward. It's gonna be fun. Okay, I cannot wait to have that office space finish. Please do not knock over anything, Jack. Like, please, it's just chaos in here. So that's my finished object. <laughs> As you can tell, it's not really finished because I have lots of feelings on it, but I do want it to be something and I'm still very torn on what to make. Like, this is why I didn't know what to make for summer. Summer projects are already hard. Summer pregnant projects are really hard. <laughs> And I just want to make things that are going to fit me now and next year. And I, I just don't know if this one's a winner, but we shall see. So I did that. I have, oh, you're sitting with me now? Yes. Let's make this as chaotic as we possibly can. So I have another whip. Or I guess that was a finished object section. And now we're doing the whips. I don't know. We're making this up. So. Reaching down here, that one is not it. Everything precariously piled in a box of books. I think it's just, it's just great. Okay, th this would work a lot better if you weren't on my lap. Do you want to say hi to the people? You don't? Can you tell? Okay, don't scratch me. You sit down, not on the project. Yeah, can you, can you find the coziness, please? All right, so I started a blanket. If we haven't ascertained already, I am pregnant. I am due with a boy in September. And I wanted to make him a baby blanket matching, sort of, kind of-ish, the one that I made for my daughter while I was pregnant with her. This is my Be Brave baby blanket pattern. It is, in fact, a knit pattern. It is the only knit pattern that I have, and it's super basic. All my other patterns are crochet. Um, but I made this for my daughter, and it was basic and simple enough that I was like, hey, I'll write up the pattern. Um, let me just fold it in half because it's a little easier to show. So it's a four, a four stripe color block, seed stitch edging, um, stockinette in the middle. Really simple, like car seat size, um, stroller size. I think it's like 30 something inches across. Not huge, very small. Um, but perfect, lightweight, easy to stuff in a diaper bag. I use this constantly with my daughter when she was insistent on always being <laughs> held in a baby wrap at all times, basically, for like basically the first year of her life. Um, she was a very attached baby. So I was always using this for like wrapping her, nursing, wrapping her up. Um, also very distractible. I wouldn't sleep if she could see anything. So I was like holding it like as a curtain over her so she could calm herself. That's a whole different, whole different thing. Um, but use this a lot and it's very light. The original yarn was Fair Isle Harbor, Fair Isle Port. Um, it was a yarn that was at Joanne for a little bit. I don't even know if the company is still a thing. The yarn may be discontinued. The whole company may have gone under. I am not sure. Um, I was working with them for a bit and then like their whole Instagram and like social media presence just kind of disappeared. Um, so if I can find it, I will link the website for you. But it was a bamboo and cotton yarn, really drapey, really soft, and it's held up remarkably well. Like I was very happy with this yarn. Um, you can see for, at this point she's using it as a doll blanket, but used it for a good year and a half, probably almost daily. And it held up very nicely. So I'm, I was a little sad that I couldn't find this exact same yarn, but I was able to find a pretty good sub this one's a sport weight, and I will say I did not do a gauge swatch. It's a blanket, um, and I don't really expect you to do a gauge swatch because it's a blanket. As long as you're getting a fabric that you're happy with, you don't have to gauge on that sort of thing. Garments, you should definitely, definitely do your gauge swatches um, before you send designers angry emails that didn't fit you, but a blanket's a blanket, so unless your gauge is real wonky, you'll end up with something blanket-sized. Um, but I ended up getting, also from Hobby Lobby, Yarn Bee Bambootiful, which is, you know, a great, great cheesy name. But it's also a 50% cotton, 50% viscose from bamboo, which is what I think the original yarn was. Um, however, this one is DK weight, supposedly. Um, but it's it's a pretty light DK. Um, and the other one was Sport. 
so I ended up going up a needle size thinking that it was DK and decreasing the stitch count slightly um, but I think I probably actually could have kept the pattern exactly as was as it was um, and used the called for needle size and all of that and actually probably got engaged because this one is a, a looser gauge for sure but again it's a baby blanket it's okay so I'm roughly following my own pattern doing a different four color sequence and like just it's so drapey so drapey uh, and another cotton bamboo yarn I really like this brown and this gray together I know I offended everyone with my gray and my green last time with my shawl, but I think this is a great color combo and I'm gonna have some left over. I think I may make a garment for the little man as well. Um, so it's these two colors and then these two. So I think I'm gonna do the green and then the yellow. The, let's see, that's not a tag, that's a button. There we go. The gray is mist, the brown is cognac, the green that I showed you is basil, which is a lovely green. And the yellow is mustard. I think they just name all of their yellows mustard. Um, it's a pretty easy go-to. So very happy with that. Um, definitely, I don't know if you can see, a looser gauge for sure. This is the original. And this is the, the new one. Um, but I think it'll be fine. It's definitely going to stretch and kind of grow with time. Uh, but it's just a blanket. Still just as lightweight. It's The measurements are not going to be exactly the same, but I'm okay with it. Um, and like I said, we use this a ton and it's just held up really well. I had wanted it to be like my daughter's like blankie, but the, she didn't like ever get that attachment to it. So she's using it as a doll blanket now and I'm glad it's gotten some love and yeah, maybe all of my children will have be, ba be brave baby blankets and various cotton bamboo combos. So I am about halfway done with this one. I have like another two or four rows in the gray and then I'll switch to the green. It is not a quick project. Um, I mean, relatively, it's easier than doing a sweater, but you are, because it's knit flat, obviously, because it's a blanket, doing knit rows and pearl rows on the back to get the stockinette and the seed stitch on the on the edge is really pretty but it, it does you know you have to stop and think about your knits on your pearls and your pearls on your knits but um it is pretty mindless there's stitch markers in there and then you just yeah so it's not a hard project at all so if you're familiar with knitting or purling you can absolutely knitting and purling you can absolutely make this baby blanket good starter and if you wanted to mess around and you weren't super insistent on getting a certain measurement you could for sure go up a couple needle sizes and do it in like a worsted weight and get a slightly larger blanket if you don't want to mess with the, the smaller yarn. But I do think the cotton and bamboo is lovely as opposed to an acrylic, um, especially if you're making for a baby who's going to be born in the summer or you want to be able to use it year round. Um, and I don't think I've ever thrown it in the washing machine. Although I might have. I think I probably hand washed it, um, but it never really suffered any severe baby grievances. Um, but the yarn has held up lovely and doesn't smell gross. <laughs> so it, it does clean well. So I've been working on that. And then this isn't even my, this is sort of my whip. This is our whip. My daughter wanted to, oh, it's in the middle of a row. Oh, bless us. Mm, if this was a cut podcast, I would knit the way through this row. Maybe I'll just unknit this while I talk to you. My daughter wanted to learn to knit. She wants to knit a sweater for her brother, but um, she's three. So learn to knit a sweater is not a great place to start. And I think now that I've actually, well, she's always been very interested in knitting and crocheting and she'll sit with yarn and just like stab it in and out. Or if like I have a finished project, she'll sit with like a blanket or something or like this. She was trying to stab the crochet hook into it and it often gets snagged. Um, but she'll be like, I'm crocheting this. I made, blah, 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 blah. um, sorry. Hang on. Now I'm just dropping stitches. Oh my goodness. This is why we have editing software, everyone. So yeah, um, she's always been very interested in the making that I do. And I thought maybe she finally had the coordination and possibly the patience to learn how to knit. I think I learned when I was like five or so. Um, but I know that there's plenty of countries where people knit lifelong. Um, 
and I feel like the knitting is a little easier to coordinate than the crocheting um, from a toddler perspective, maybe, but maybe I should try both. She wanted to knit, so I said, but we could knit a baby blanket. And I may have gone a little overachiever on the gauge and the yarn. When I was getting all this other Hobby Lobby yarn, I grabbed Yarn Beat Breathe Deep in the Colorway Spa, and it is a 100% polyester yarn. It's very similar to Lion Brand's Feels Like Butter, Butter, which just pains me to say. It's ridiculous. So it's, yeah, a polyester, like fuzzy chenille type yarn, but it's one of the thinner ones. And I had looked at all the big chunky, like the velvet yarns are too slippery. I didn't want anything that was plied because I didn't want her to be frustrated with splitting. Um, I wanted something at least worsted weight. I had looked at some bulkies and super bulkies, but I thought the needles themselves were gonna be too chunky in her hands to like do a size. I don't even know what these ones are. These are, a, these are a 10. So to do like a size like 15 or something would be just really bulky in her little hands, I thought. Um, so I went with her worsted weight with a size 10 circular needle so we could do a blanket um, instead of just like a short scarf thing because you can't really knit a baby a scarf so I cast on I don't remember I think it was like 125 stitches under the size 10 so it's pretty big um, and I maybe should have made it like maybe I should let her knit like a burp cloth instead she understands the basics of it um, so she'll sit with me and we'll do it together and she understands that you, you stick it in and then we say that it's a little snake that pops up through the hole and then he's chilly so he needs a little scarf so you wrap the scarf around him and she's not like tensioning it over her fingers or anything we're just like physically wrapping it and then he's all cozy so he goes back in his hole and then he it repeats the process 125 times across the row and I think she thought knitting was possibly more exciting than that um or more instant so she's not super interested in doing more than like four stitches um, or she wants me to like put it up through the stitch and then take it off but she'll do the little wrap around scarf part but she does get it because she sits down by herself and pretends and she's like oh my little snake can we put a little scarf on him because he's chewing so she can she can do it um but as far as actually knitting a blanket i don't know if we're gonna make it through but there's no rush because her brother is not gonna be going anywhere so he's gonna get a blanket when he gets a blanket um, but yeah, maybe I should. Yeah, like I can't do a scarf. I could do a burp cloth, washcloth kind of thing. Or to let her use some really, really, really chunky yarn. I just thought it would be more manageable with her tiny hands. I don't know if anybody has any suggestions on teaching kids, particularly of a preschool age, how to knit and or crochet. I would love some resources on that because she is interested and she did successfully learn how to sew um she said she wanted to sew and i was like okay we can sew so i got like some of those or we made some of those like punch cards with the the holes in them where you sew like a shoelace through and she got that really quick and then wanted to like no i want a real sew so we sewed a pillow for her doll and she successfully made a pillow you know sitting on my lap with help but understood that it had to go up one way and down the other way and it couldn't go around the side and she knew when there was a mistake and so she does have some good crafty crafty skills um yeah, the blanket's a little much. So we shall see about that. So that is a R whip situation. And is that all of, yes. Yes, yes. That I believe is all of the whips. The shawl I talked in more, uh, talked about in more last time. I am oh, still, it's still not in testing, but will be hopefully very soon. Again, with the offices and stuff and kind of chaos. I have not, it's also like plant the garden season have not sat down and finished the draft, but it's mostly there, halfway there. Tester call coming soon. Keep an eye out on Instagram and in my newsletter. And then other whips other than, yeah, that baby blanket, I really don't know what I'm making next. Probably cast on some more socks, more baby stuff, but I'm a little disheartened after that garment. <laughs> I talked about it a lot last time, so I'm not going to talk about it again, but I don't know what to make for myself and my daughter definitely doesn't need anything else right now and like all of her sweaters and stuff from last year are still going to fit in the fall so I don't even need to be making her fall stuff. Um, I do have yarn that I'm going to talk about in a second for another design but I 
just don't know what to make right now. So it's kind of a weird, kind of a weird phase, kind of a weird podcast. We're doing weird stuff. We're going to have some more tea. Not entirely sure if I was fully out of frame for that or not, but we do what we can. So acquiring the same yarn that I was using for the baby blanket, my baby blanket, I grabbed a bunch of skeins in the cognac color because I really like it. Um, it kind of just fits my whole vibe. And yeah, this is the viscose bamboo and cotton one. It's DK weight. Very light, very drapey. Um, I want to make a ruana, um, I think is the technical term. One of the, I don't know, I've seen it like, I've seen them seamed and I've seen them open as well, but my definition is like the two front panels and then a big, almost like a poncho, but it's not over your head. It's like a cardigan version of a poncho, if that makes sense. Like a big square, I can't put in pictures, <laughs> big, big old square, like wearing a blanket on your back and then two rectangular panels in the front. So you're basically wearing a blanket. <laughs> it usually has tassels or fringe. And I have a bunch of not handmade ones that I I regularly enjoy wearing, but I did really enjoy um, postpartum for like nursing, just using as like a, a quick cover if I needed one kind of thing. Um, and it also doubles great as a blanket or lay down and play in the grass kind of thing. Um, so I wanted to make a lightweight one because the ones that I have are either wool or some sort of synthetic wool lookalike type thing, but very blankety. Um, so I would like to have a lighter weight one, both to wear in summer with like dresses and like chilly air conditioned scenarios. Um, and just, yeah, as a quick cover. So I want to make one of those and I have a design in mind, um, for that. And it should be pretty easy as far as garment designs go, because it's not going to be graded in like all eight sizes. It'll probably be like a extra small, small, medium, large, um, couple sizes fits most kind of thing. Um, cause it, it's not fitted at all. It's like a big blanket. Um, so I have seen them sometimes seamed up the sides, but I think I'm gonna leave it open. I don't know. We'll see. I need to actually swatch and make it happen, but I do have a vision in my mind of what I would like that to be very open and airy. So I'll probably have that done hopefully for end of summer, beginning of fall pre baby if we're lucky. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a little stuck on designs, a little stuck on making, for myself and uh, apparently a little stuck in a room without proper podcast materials and the lights getting really weird now and we do what we can. Uh, and last thing in this fabulous wild episode that we're doing, I grabbed, we had gone, am I in the frame? I don't even know. Are you looking at like my eyeball? Probably. Gone up to Vermont briefly. And on the way back from where we were, we stopped at Green Mountain Spinnery. I do have an entire vlog tour of this mill um, from last year from the I-91 shop hop, which also, if you're interested in shop hopping, I think is happening in first or second week of August um, from the Connecticut to Vermont area. So they are a spinnery that spins yarns from our mill, their mill. They spin yarns from all over the U.S. Um, organically. Um, and produce yarn for farmers who otherwise wouldn't have the equipment to produce yarn on a large scale other than just like, you know, a spinning wheel. So they process other farms yarn, but they also have a small store where they then sell some of their own yarns. Um, so I grabbed, while I was there, I have a bunch that are normally sitting behind me in my podcast, but, um, I am not... <laughs> where I normally am. They have a bunch of what they call, I think, mill ends. So it's when they're clearing off machines um, of other cones and there's bits and pieces left. And these usually have a bunch of breaks. Most of them are unplied. I did get a couple that were a two ply, um, but this one is super thin, about a lace weight, um, single plied. Actually, is this plied? No, it's just twisty, just really twisty a well twisted meant to be plied in with another yarn um, mill end and they sell them for super duper cheap. They're mystery fibers. So you don't know what exactly, I mean, it's definitely wool, um, but there could be other things in there, but all of it is non-synthetic and organic. 
um, but they sell them for, I think, 35 cents an ounce. I don't exactly, I'd have to math it out. How many ounces? I don't think I have. I don't know if it says on the receipt. No, it doesn't say how many ounces, but for those three cones, I did in fact pay $2.73. It's 35 cents an ounce. So whatever that comes out to, how many ounces? So I got these two that are similar, but definitely not the exact same content. This one's a little woolier. These are a two ply. Actually, you have four ply? How many plies are you? Hang on. Three ply? Oh, a three ply, that's interesting. Plies, if we're not familiar, are how many strands of yarn are twisted together to create the final yarn. This appears to be a three ply, um, and it's very loosely plied, very woolly. Um, similar in color. And these I like to have to do dyeing experiments on. Um, they are great. They're super wooly, so I'm not able to wear them. Yeah, no, that's too much for me. Um, next to skin other than on my feet. Um, but I do really like having the cones to do, I don't think I brought it in here, but to either hold double um, with another yarn in socks just to add some stability to like heels, toes, and cuffs, or you could double like two of these up and make um, socks with it, but it still wouldn't have any nylon, so it's not the most durable, but it's a great add-in for something. I wish that I could like straight wear this, but this is so itchy to me. I am so sensitive to to woolly wool. I wish I wasn't because I want to love this so bad. And all of the yarns in like their shop, I want to love them so bad and make like beautiful color work sweaters, but I'm very sensitive. But I have another gray that's lighter than this that I've been adding into socks. So I think holding the darker gray and the lighter gray would make a beautiful marl. And then doing some natural dye experiments as I'm pulling stuff out of my garden and the woods and whatnot this summer. Um, Cause there's probably, eh, I'd say this one's at least 50 grams, probably more. Um, it's, hard to, it's hard to tell with the cone weight in there, but I'd say this is probably a 50 gram. This is probably about 50 grams, and then this one's definitely at least 100. This is a much thinner ply, um, or a much thinner yarn, or whatever the terminology is. But if you're interested in how they make their yarn, and just the mill process in general of how yarn goes from a sheep to being yarn, uh, definitely check out my vlog from last year, because I go for a full tour through the mill with one of the employees, and it's all it's a uh, co-op, so it's all employee-owned. It's really cool really cool place um, in Putney, Vermont, if ever you have the chance to stop there. So I think, I think that's all the content that I have. How long are we at? 38 minutes? Yeah, not too bad. Pretty standard. So I hope this episode wasn't too, too weird. I'm gonna do my best to maybe edit slightly, but it's probably just gonna be, you get what you get. So if you have any thoughts for me, I'm pointing directionally that this over here any thoughts on that i would love to hear that um because i don't know what to do with it and i don't want to be like cutting into it and changing it too too much and i also don't want to make like a third one <laughs> so I just, I just want that one to be something so i think what i'm most leaning towards is taking off the tassels and just having the triangular wedge edges open and leaving it at that and if at some point i add a flat hemline across the front maybe next year maybe i do but yeah, I'm also out of the main color beige yarn, so I'd have to go get more. So yeah, kind of just leaning towards <laughs> chopping off those tassels and uh, uh, making a garland. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to be, um, but I don't think they're going to be on there. And yeah, any other suggestions for garments, designs, the like? Um, yeah, keep an eye out on Instagram for a shawl pattern tester call. And keep an eye out for when I finish <laughs> that office and move in there. I cannot wait to have a designated podcast recording space where I'm not moving stuff every week um, and just it's set up and cute and all of that. I mean, it's not a huge like life priority for most people probably, but I'm really excited to have a cute podcast area um, and get all the yarn organized because it's all, the whole house is kind of a mess because all the stuff from the offices have been dispersed. Yeah. 
has been dispersed into other places and the basement is just a pile of all of our belongings. <laughs> so really excited to get that reorganized. Kind of almost feels like moving, but we've only moved a couple rooms instead of a whole house, which is, you know, better. So we're gonna do that. <laughs> and I think, I think that's it. Probably missed something. Probably will fail to link something. I'm gonna do my best and maybe for episode 53 we will be in a more settled space but i appreciate you being here and like i said if you're new go check out some of the older ones they're better but thank you thank you for being here and i will talk to you next time for whatever adventure we're having then thanks guys <laughs>